We're continuing our series on Chapter 2 in Aqueous Chemistry. In this video we'll be looking at the hydrophobic effect and its consequences in terms of the formation of biological compartments. What we find is that the interactions with water aren't always positive. That is to say there are molecules that are attracted to water, hydrophilic, and those that are repelled by water, hydrophobic. In other words, nonpolar compounds won't dissolve in a polar solvent like water, and the best example we have is the fact that oil and water don't mix. In fact, the denser water settles to the bottom of the container. The question is, what is driving this separation from a thermodynamic point of view? Does it have more to do with enthalpy or entropy? If we elevate the temperature, even considerably, we still see the same separation, so it must have more to do with entropy, and indeed it does. If we consider this figure from your book and could imagine taking a single nonpolar molecule and adding that to water, we find the water molecules become very constrained in the layer directly around that nonpolar molecule. This represents a decrease in entropy. That is the change in entropy, the delta S before and after adding that nonpolar molecule is negative. Now perhaps you're thinking of those sodium and chloride ions from our last video, and the water seemed to be ordered around them. They still had freedom of movement, though, to interact with one another, to form and reform hydrogen bonds, to associate and dissociate with those ions. In this case, uh, surrounding these nonpolar molecules, they're much more constrained. Let's look at that in a little bit more detail. In this case, we have uh, a fatty acid chain that is a polar head group in this long hydrocarbon tail and we want to compare the water molecules constrained around that lipid tail you can see very highly ordered into cages as compared to the bulk phase molecules where they can rapidly form and reform those hydrogen bonds a greater freedom of movement around here very restricted around that nonpolar tail the question is what happens when we add several molecules of lipid to the water? If you look at the upper left of your screen here, we could imagine each individual lipid being solvated. In that case then, we have a great number of water molecules that are highly ordered around each individual lipid and therefore a very large decrease in entropy. In contrast, we have the figure on the bottom right where the lipid molecules are actually, actually clustered together. In this case, the polar head groups are associated together and the nonpolar tails. In this case, you'll notice there are fewer water molecules that are clustered, that is to say ordered, around the cluster. So there's a much lower decrease in entropy, and in fact we say there's an increase in entropy. That is, comparatively speaking, there's an increase in entropy when the lipids cluster together as compared to the individual dispersion. So the lipid molecules are becoming more ordered, but overall the water molecules have greater freedom of movement and therefore entropy is increasing and this is a spontaneous association. So then we see that the repulsive force of water is equally as important as the attractive. Keep in mind this is the hydrophobic effect, not the lipid effect. It has more to do with water driving away nonpolar substances than it does nonpolar substances interacting with each other. The question then is how do these lipid molecules associate in water and it depends on the geometry of the lipid. Let's look at the simple case of a fatty acid like palmitate. You have a polar head group and a single nonpolar tail. If you look at the bottom of the screen at the cartoon here, you can see it's kind of triangular in shape. You have the wide polar head group and the narrow tail. How will these associate when they cluster in water? These tend to form these micelles. You can see the triangular shape here of the individual molecule fits very well in this micelle arrangement. Within this micelle, those hydrocarbon tails associate together. That is 100% nonpolar. The polar head groups, the blue spheres, are facing external towards the water environment. There's almost no ordering of the water, and so this happens very spontaneously, and the ordered shell of water is much less, and therefore an increase in entropy. In the case of a lipid where you have a polar head group and two nonpolar tails, you can see the geometry is more rectangular. So these tend to associate into lipid bilayers, and this is in fact what makes up our cellular and subcellular compartments.
Again, the nonpolar tails are the internal environment and the polar head groups are facing outward towards the aqueous environment on either side of that membrane. This allows us then to form sealed compartments, whether the cell, the external part of the cell, or the subcellular compartments. This is why we're not amorphous blobs, we can form distinct cells and have a difference inside versus outside. Keep in mind always that that, that uh, lipid membrane is mostly nonpolar. That means if there's anything that's charged, even if it's as small as a sodium or a potassium ion, it cannot cross that bilayer. So now we can set up a difference in concentration on either side of that membrane. What we find is that potassium concentration is much higher inside the cell and sodium concentration is much higher outside the cell. We'll return to the importance of these concentration gradients uh, in Chapter 9. In the next video, we want to look at the pH scale and the acid-base properties of water itself, as well as how that relates to other biological molecules and systems.